Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the next episode of the Apex Show. I hope you're doing great. And today we're going to be going through why you should get rid of stuff. That's the main topic of today's podcast and today's episode. Maybe the other way how you can really call that is just decluttering your life, uh, decluttering your business, your focus. And once you, declu- once you get decluttered or just rid of, get rid of all the unnecessary stuff, then you'll, be end up, you'll end up with all the essential stuff that's necessary for you to just get to the next level of wherever you want to go and just achieve and crash all of your goals. So just to maybe establish a very solid baseline about just decluttering your life and why it's important, essentially it's our main human tendency to want to hoard stuff, just to have as much stuff as we possibly can. You can see that on people like just definitely maybe the older generation, once once they um, like establish or maybe achieve a career, certain career goal for example they re- receive a promotion in their job like they they buy some new material stuff and just um they, then there's like this kind of fallacy that they see their neighbors upgrading their stuff so they do it as well but maybe just to give you a very specific example of how i encar- encountered with this in my life and my experience actually i'm going to be speaking on one of my friends i'm not going to mention his name because i really appreciate him and i uh yeah just just wanted wanted to include this as an example so yeah i know one very good friend of mine he has an mba from an ivy league school uh from from the us and he's working as a consultant at a very high position and one thing about him is that he actually hoards stuff. He just, when you come into his flood, he has just so much stuff there that it's very hard to move because there's just like stuff everywhere. And this was like a thing that really surprised me that many of these people like just really start hoarding stuff and, and maybe even in some respect really think that they, it gives them something. Like the more stuff you have, like many people maybe think that there's a direct correlation between how much stuff you actually have and how happy you feel or happy or content or maybe maybe there's some other utility that they're really searching for. But in terms of like happiness and maybe just really trying to tolerate this even for your a- for your ability to be able to make faster decisions and to move forward faster towards what you actually want. I don't really think that there are many advantages to this point. Like the more stuff you had, the harder it is for you to actually make decisions. And maybe just to drive home another point is that like this podcast is mainly aimed for, for younger people, like definitely. And having when you're young, having less stuff gives you actually like unlimited flexibility. You... You want to travel, for example, so you just pack your backpack and go. You don't need to worry about anything. You simply, like, that was a kind of a life that I was living. Like, you just moved from country to country. You travel when you, whenever you want. You maybe even are free to start a new business because, like, today you can do whatever you want online. Just launch a new campaign, launch, launch ads, create websites, whatever. Within, like, few bucks that you spend, you can actually launch whatever. So... In terms of the flexibility, how I, how I did the, did that when I came to Bali, I just packed my backpack, one backpack with everything that I had, notebook, like just some basic camera gear, and that was it. I didn't take any li- other luggage. When I came to into Bali, they gave me a mo- uh, like a bike, a motorcycle, uh, a helmet, and I pretty much like had a backpack, and that was my life. Um, I mean, like, I, I felt great. It was just super free. Like then, uh, one day after being four weeks or now like two weeks stuck in Bali, I just took all of my stuff and went into a different location in Bali and stayed there for two days and then into a whole different location and stayed there, stayed there for two days. And then I decided I would go to Singapore. So I just packed my backpack and the next day I went and I gave back the, the motorcycle and I mean, I was pretty much done. It was a very simple life, but at the same time, I enjoyed it, enjoyed it pretty much. On the other hand, you have just like, it kind of you know, feels that I mean, like I was like this kind of person also before. Like I really tried to, for example, hoard a lot of stuff. I tried to hoard a lot of like luxury brands that I had. Um, like for example, I bought the Gucci shoes, and I just bought them, and now I don't pretty much even wear them because they hurt my feet all the time. And it's just like okay, you hoard this stuff, and then you like the stuff actually become or the stuff actually starts owning you 
maybe like like there is this kind of side effect that might happen that actually like the stuff then starts preoccupying your mind which in fact means that you aren't and won't be able to focus all of your effort towards your actually like the main goal that you're trying to accomplish which then inherently might, might re- also negatively impact your results as well so yeah, if you have like a car leasing, a mortgage, or bring in more to business, you might be wealthy for from a certain degree. But on the other hand, a certain percentage of your mind is like definitely always preoccupied with with these things, and thus you can devote it to other things that could possibly just just bring you more joy or more more whatever, more whatever. Uh, there, there's one very good great example. Uh, Steve Jobs, he didn't have any furniture in his house. I mean he was a super minimalist and even like i'm I'm kind of like i'm not sure if i'm f- super minimalist but i'm i really even based on analysis and everything else that I did it's just like i enjoy when i enjoy quality and i don't really like superficiality just like really having like so many friends that i don't even know know their names even though like, i have a lot of friends but on the other hand it's just like quality is is way more important than quantity and even in terms of like, okay, you have experiences. Like, why why would I go and, and now try to, here in Vienna, go into some clubs and then just like, maybe my my point of view, like just, I have classmates who are doing that every single weekend and even during the weeks. And then they get drunk here at 4 a.m. when I'm finishing my podcast. And no, I'm like fin- not finishing it at 4, but like, I'm not sure like early morning hours, but I just see them and they're coming here and they're just wasted. But that, that's their decision. It's just like, I don't really need the, those experiences, those superficial experiences with hanging out with some weird people. And I don't even have time for that. It's just like for other people, not for me. Yeah, so... Like, in terms of the experiences that I choose, like, okay, I, for example, went into Hawaii. Like, that was a specifically experience that I thought about for like half a year before I actually committed that I would go there. And I had a friend there as well. So I was kind of working slash 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 exploring there and like did even skydiving and swam with sharks because I wanted to do that. And, and those were also specific moments that I knew that I wanted to do. And those were like, okay, great. Like these specific pinpointed things I want to do. So I did them. And it was great. And now I pretty much am stuck in my room for, the, for a month already. And I'm not doing anything else. Just, just working. Because that's my focus currently right now. And I feel great. I feel content. I know that like, okay, in, in the next three months, maybe I won't leave this room because I uh, just need to finish a lot of stuff. But uh, on the other hand, I know that like maybe then I'll make a decision that I'll go, for example, to, uh, yeah, February seems like I'm going to Dubai for a few days. Then April, I'm going Miami, like Florida again. Then maybe Seattle, um, Austin, Boston, Chicago, Vancouver. Not not sure w- where else I'll go, but I mean, like these kind of things pretty much pop up all the time. So I know, like, it, it's just uh, like splitting your life into actually things that you want, and maybe even a better cl- clarification here is that it's it's very interesting, and maybe even like a further level or the next level of this analysis is really thinking about the things that. Like you, you specifically want, but you want them because you want them, but and you don't want them because of what others tell you you should want. And that's like a very interesting concept, because some people might think that yeah, like some people just live their lives for for others, which I in terms of like not for others that that they care for others, but they just like do do things that they don't like in order to impress others. For example, wear certain things, wear expensive brands, wear like this and that. And um, like, for example, for myself, I like cars. So whenever I just like do and do some cool stuff with cars, I rented a Tesla in San Diego. It was the first time I ever rode a Tesla. I mean, like that was, that was sick. It's an experience that I have. I'm like just super pump, uh, pumped up that I did that. Then what else? Like I drove a Lambo. I drove uh, like an SRT, <laughs> like just doing donuts on a on a desert, um, like parking lot. I mean, it was just crazy. But at the same time, I was just like, 
a sick experience. I even took one of one friend with me, and he he shot videos. We we together shoot, shoot it actually a commercial that I never released. I, I still need to release that. <laughs> it was just so much freaking fun. You just you you just do some stuff. And and for me, I, I was passionate about cars since I was young. It was like okay, I, like that that's essentially a thing that that was exciting. But at the same time, like last week, I guess I sold my car. Uh, that I had here, I mean, in Europe, I just, I just didn't need that. I'm, I'm just like, s- here in Vienna, I can pretty much get anywhere from here very fast, and I don't need car, because and now when I sold it, I mean, like, my mind, I essentially feel that, like, maybe 5% of my mind is no more preoccupied by the car, and just thinking about it, okay, I'm actually, like, working here one month, and I don't need it at all, I'm just, like, paying these payments for nothing, and it's just, like, was stuck in my stuck in my mind and, and for that reason I just like dropped it. Like whatever. And maybe just to state a like a fact here, like if you look at these a lot of successful people, like they have very weird habits and all of them are different. But for example, what I found is that they just really focus on what's what's the main 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 important thing and just like focusing on or, or putting the main first thing first. And for me having just a clear mind a clean clear focus that i've even like created in the last two months that i um j- just kind of restructured a lot of things to to make me more efficient and more like increase my throughput of the activities and, and action that i'm actually able to take it's great it's just like it's working and i'm very surprised about the results actually about my focus and my my ability to, to get stuff done on a whole new level of quality that I never even was able to think that i would actually be able to do even the level of people that I've been able to surround surround myself with, it's just really positive to, look, to have a look on that. So, but maybe just like to get back on the track, like, or maybe how to apply the specifics that are, I've been speaking about here today. Like, like maybe assess all areas of your life. Like, for example, look at your relationships, and even like, or maybe like the first step is to definitely specify what's your goal or what's your life vision, or at least like you don't need to maybe, yeah. You, you, you need to make it up. You need to create an enticing vision enough for you to be actually excited about your future. Like, that's the first thing. Regardless of whether it's possible, whether it's not possible, like, whatever. Just just make it an enticing vision that will actually inspire you to, to wake up every single day and bust your, bust your ass for years to come. Like, I mean, that's the, that's, that's the baseline. Then the second thing is, like, then analyze all areas of your life and analyze which things are actually able to get you to the next level and which things aren't able to do that. Do that. Analyze your habits, what you're doing, if you're smoking, if you're hanging out with people, if you're drinking, if you're like doing these kind of stupid things, then um, analyze maybe your, your relationships, like what kind of people you're hanging out or hanging around with. Analyze your, um, maybe like what things you own that might be or maybe like even analyze your current setup. Like for example, if you're currently earning already some cash online, it might be great for you to just go and head to Bali or somewhere else and live on way less for a few months and, and at the same time just grow your business because this is a very important fact that actually you as a person change when you change your environments. I was a different person when I was in the US. I, like I, I am a different person when I'm in the US because I'm in a different environment. I mean, I'm in a different person when I'm when I'm in Bali. I mean, I'm a different person in every single location where I actually go to. And, and that, so are you. It works for everyone else. You ch- you change as a person based on the location where you are. There has been this study conducted that when actually like there was this war between the US and Vietnam going on or, or like the Vietnam War on the other, otherwise called, th- there, the, these US soldiers that were set, sent to Vietnam, there were like huge numbers. I'm not sure about the s- specific percentage but like, um, I guess like at least seventy percent of all the soldiers there have tried heroin as a drug. But like, like those people, like were were kind of like addicted there. But then when they were deported back into the U.S., like majority of them never, never ever tried heroin again. And compared to that, like to those facilities that help other people to get into like get get out stop using drugs and like alcohol and stuff like usually when people go there 
there's a and then get back back out like usually 90 percent of those people get back to their bad habits and start using alcohol and drugs again and the reason why is that because they get back to the same environment where they came from and uh, so if you want to change yourself as a person the best thing you can do is just to change your environment like for example for me moving from slovakia to vienna was just the baseline like i was just like I, i'm like this year i've been there once one month ago just for about six hours <laughs> And and since then I haven't been there for like six months and I don't really want to come back. That's that that's it. It's just like it has just a, such a tremendous impact on the person who you are and even on the things that you do. Like if you go back maybe to certain locations, for example, for me it's getting back home uh, or, or to the place where I where I grew up. And yeah, definitely changing our country. Even for me, like I definitely I, I perhaps want to move to Scandinavia in the upcoming few months or even you. I'm. I'm like just pretty much want to travel the world end up upcoming few years so we'll, we're gonna see where I'll gonna end up I mean like I'm I'm kind of relaxed with that <laughs> just not always stressing in this regard yeah so that, that was one thing and uh, in terms of maybe like even speaking about Steve Jobs and like how he doesn't really have any furniture in his house and like then they're these also like other kinds of entrepreneurs and in terms of like having a look at them like then maybe one thing that I really have on my mind is just like then really having a deeper dive in terms of how your life really how you want your life to really look like because in terms of Steve Jobs he had a lot of internal affairs in terms of his his life his family and what happened there the relationships that were kind of turbulent since he was one of the most successful people at that time and uh, leading one of the most like leading some of the most innovative companies at the time. Um, and I mean, like now the best company that he founded is, is the biggest company in the world with market capitalization of more than like two or three billion, uh, two or three trillion. It's like 2,000 to 3,000 billion. It's crazy. And yeah, it's just have a really clear vision about who you are, uh, what you want to be. And based on that, just make the shots, I guess maybe even that like just be a good person uh th that was just like a just just a base on i mean it, it's not that hard it, it, i guess it's it's just just doing the right stuff it's like yeah, you have two things doing the right stuff and doing things you have like doing the right things and doing things right like you have to do both of them so you first do the right things and then you do the things right yeah kind of like tank tank to us here Great. Uh, so this is pretty much it for today. Uh, take care of yourself. If you have any questions, if you have any remarks, maybe to this specific content or maybe some further ideas for content, feel free to shoot me a message on my Instagram, Jacob Bartek. And with that being said, it was great speaking to you and I'm going to catch you in the next one. Bye.